Good morning. It is Morning Coffee with Steve, episode 209 for Monday, October 29th, 2024. I'm Steve Saylor. This is your daily show of gaming news, accessibility news, or updates about my life. If you want a exclusive audio podcast version of this show, make sure to go support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Steve Saylor. I have uh, coffee. Uh, as you can see, I am in a hotel room, which is more like an apartment. Like, there's a, you can't really tell, but there's a kitchen back there. I got a full, like, I'm, so I'm in San Francisco uh, for another gig. Uh, I can't say with who, but they put me up in, like, this, it's like this sort of compound that has, like, a whole bunch of, like, like homes, basically, and they kind of, it's like a hotel uh, it's sort of situation, but it feels like it's like you, you have your own apartment. I don't know, it's, it's weird. I've never been in one of these before, and it's kind of cool. So, anyway, I got to drink my coffee. Feels so good. Oh, after having um, airplane coffee yesterday, I just <laughs> not good. So yes, I am back in San Francisco again uh, for another couple of days. Uh, I'll be back home Tuesday, so basically tomorrow evening. Um, so probably you might get an evening tea with Steve if I can find some tea. I think actually the hotel gives you tea, but um, anyway. So probably the housekeeping, probably tomorrow will be evening tea with Steve instead of morning coffee. For those who don't know, basically whenever I travel or if I can't be able to do uh, morning coffee with Steve, <coughs> excuse me, in the mornings, um, because either I have to travel or whichever, I usually record the night before and talk about the news for today. So um, kind of also updates. Uh, I just came back also from the um, the launch of the, the launch party for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Uh, and some of you, I will say, some of you have seen the video that I put up, um, the You're Not Blind video. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I'll put a link in the show notes, but it's not really meant to sort of be like something I'm promoting. Um, the reason why I, I, one of the main reasons why I put out that video, reasons are pretty self-explanatory in the video itself, but one additional reason that I didn't sort of talk about, but I wanted to at least mention here, um, is because the accusations of being deceitful to developers and to basically the community, I wanted to address it now. The, the reason why I'm addressing it now instead of like sometime over the past 10 years of receiving these comments is because of the year that we've had with um, uh, the consultant or the prominent person in the community who basically faked their entire life and their, uh, and their partners and everything and we don't even know if their disability is is real um, based off the article that came out back in uh, in August if you don't know um, it's basically someone I used to I like I used to know really well uh, and was kind of taken aback by that uh, they just basically made up their entire life it's because of that deceitfulness that I felt like I need to be able to say something now because I didn't want this to fester and to grow to beyond control of what I what I can be able to talk about. So it's it's not that I'm just trying to be able to get ahead of it. So I'm, because I'm this like no, it's just I'm just trying to be able to with with the mistrust that we've had with people in the community. I wanted to address it now, Bef just to, just in case kind of thing. So. Anyway, back to the, uh, I, I just wanted to say that just as, as, as I thank you for watching the video. Thank you for the kind comments received both on YouTube and on social media. It really does mean a lot. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it really does make it validating um, of what, uh, of what I do as a, as a, as an accessibility advocate and consultant and also as a content creator to know that there are people that at least understand and, and know what, what it is that, um, I'm feeling and what like how uh, like how things have kind of progressed unfortunately with some of the negative comments and I know there's probably some people even watching this that are still thinking that I'm that, that they won't that I can't change their minds in any way shape or form and that's fine like you can believe me not believe me anymore I told I said what I said I and that's basically it that's that's all I can really say so Okay, but going back to the launch party of uh, Call of Duty. So uh, I, I wanted to be able to, I was hoping I could be able to make, maybe make like a little video about it. Uh, I may do that for, for like socials, like a, a vertical video or like a short form video, but I wanted to at least show some of the stuff that, uh, that kind of 
got. Um, so the, the party was in Madison, and it was for all of Raven's uh, Raven employees, including some from Treyarch that came over to to the party as well. Um, but uh, they, if you if you haven't played Black Ops Six yet, uh, it's okay. I'm not going to spoil it. But there is, but they basically recreated the entire uh, venue into one of the levels in the game. There is a specific level that kind of is a gala uh, of some sorts for uh, Senator Bill Clinton because the game is set in the 90s. And um, they recreated the, the, the level, uh, or at least the, the gala, in at this venue. And it was actually really cool. They had like um, posters of Bill Clinton everywhere. Uh, they've had, um, they had an, a, like a presidential podium. They had like a giant um, ice sculpture of like an eagle that was constantly melting. Uh, I was surprised it kind of last the night. And um, it w and they had like all kinds of like president like U U.S. flags and and everything around and it was just really cool. But also, so they they had they gave you like two drink tokens for the, for the entire night. Um, and uh, instead of like tickets or um, like passes or whatever that they like they you normally would get to, at a at a at a venue that gives you like drink tickets, they gave away these buttons. It's kind of hard. To, there we go. It was literally vote for Clinton buttons. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, like, I actually, so, you, so it's, don't worry, I actually did, because he gave you two, I redeemed both of them, but on the way out, I was able to ask to be able to get one of these. Uh, so I have an official vote for Clinton button, <laughs> which I thought was, like, pretty cool. Um, they also had a, a, a Zoltar machine, and it actually, like, it's, it, it kind of, Zoltar speaks, it, it kind of, it gave out like a little fortune. I'm going to read mine because I actually thought it was pretty cool. Um, if you give a monkey a typewriter, eventually it will learn how to type a word. In life, sometimes the best way to succeed at something new is to throw yourself into it. You will never be completely ready for a new opportunity or project. It's time to dive in and learn as you go. You will soon realize that most successful people have gotten where they are today with that or this mentality. Uh, and lucky numbers 8, 14, 18, 21, 29, 40. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Like, I thought that was kind of, that actually kind of fits a lot with my, like, with myself a little bit. Like, I know these fortunes are not, you know, they're not, there's nothing mystical about them, but it was kind of good affirmation for, for what I've been um, feeling. And uh, especially this year with, like, Dungeon Disabled, I felt like I just kind of threw myself in and, it was it was great, so uh, I kind of like that. Um, they had a bunch of also arcade machines that you can be able to play uh, games and stuff too. Actually, while I was trying to be able to play, uh, they had a Simpsons game, a uh, Simpsons arcade machine, and I was about to uh, like to to start playing it, and I, I get I, I get tapped on a shoulder and I get turned around, and um, uh, I got introduced to Brian, who's the studio head of Raven, and uh, if you don't uh, like, he's been around for. Uh, I, I believe, yeah, Brian Raffle. Um, he's been around f like since I think probably Raven's beginning. Because uh, I remember seeing his office uh, when I went there back in May uh, for a cons for basically for a consulting trip. Because um, that 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 was part of the contract was that they sometimes would bring me out for uh, for in studio stuff. And I saw on his office like he had like his everyone like who works at Raven for a long time. They have placards on their doors um, of all the games that they worked on. Uh, over, over, like working on a Raven, and Brian had been a part of all like a lot of them, including my fav one of my favorite games of all time, which was Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Never played that game. It's on GOG because I actually have it. I have that and plus so Star Trek Elite Force Two. And Brian actually worked on both. And he was telling me that he got to go to the Voyager set, and he got to you know meet the, like uh, like uh, like Kate Mulgrew, who's the cap like Catherine Janeway, and he was telling me a little bit about it. I mean, he kind of like kind of perked up a little like about the about that. It was just it was kind of neat just to kind of chat with him for for a little bit, and he thanked me for the, the work that I did on the accessibility side, and it was really cool because also as well like the um, it, uh, the person who introduced me to him was the. The guy who's uh, who was one of the heads of Warzone, and so it was kind of like just it was kind of a really cool surreal moment. Um, and then also right like also right there was uh, my friend Sydney, who um, Sydney was the one who made the, who initially reached out to me uh, about wanting to work with Call of Duty. Um, she's now working with Raven. Uh, she moved to uh, to a different studio, uh, but her husband still works at Raven, so she was that's why she was at the party. And to see her there 
while I was talking with Brian, while I was meeting with him, and then also like it's just a very surreal moment. And um, I, I, I did get I did get a picture of him. I can't show because I'm using my phone for for the uh, the camera, but. Um, it was, it was really cool. Uh, uh, maybe I'll find like, I'll, I'll maybe I'll post like a highlight of, uh, on my Instagram story. If you go to Instagram.com slash Steve Saylor and you can be able to find it there. Um, uh, like the, the highlights, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that up before I put up this episode. Um, because yeah, it was, it was, it was a pretty cool night. And, um, and also I got some pictures with some of the, like some of the uh, folks that, uh, that I worked with. I'll start off with actually my own personal one. So if you see this on the video, it's kind of hard. It's a, the reflection's kind of a bit off, but uh, so I dressed up as like Canadian tuxedo. So I had like basically a, a denim jacket, denim jeans, and I also wore the, uh, the to represent Canada a video in arcade top ten uh, T-shirt, which is like one of the Canada's old, like first one of the first gaming like TV shows back in the nineties, and um, it was it was really cool. It was basically what kind of sort of sparked the the interest of initially of going into broadcasting and uh, and going to video games so it was cool to be able to like wear that um, shout out to retrokid.ca for for making those t-shirts um, and then I also had another one where I kind of did like a full like pop collar sort of deal let me see there we go the photographer was very nice and he helped me out because I couldn't see and uh, he was he actually kind of directed me and kind of pointed me where I wanted where I needed to go um, and then Actually, I'm going to show this picture because I've got two others, but I, I'm going to show this picture because this is one of my favorites of, of the night, which is basically this is this is the team that I got to work with for the most part um, at Raven. Um, it's the UI UX team, and there's some also technical uh, dire uh, directors in there. Um, my boss. Uh, so actually, so yeah, you can kind of you can kind of see. Uh, I'm so apologize for the audio version. You have to kind of look at the YouTube version to see it. Um, the uh, this this woman right here, that's Sydney. She was the one who got me into um, to to the uh, yeah. Uh, she was the one who got me into the into Raven and working Call of Duty. This is Brian, who is my boss. This is Dean. He's normally with a beard, but he actually shaved it for this costume. For it was a Halloween costume uh, night sort of deal, so we all dressed up either as '90s or Halloween costumes. And uh, Dean dressed up as uh, from uh, the movie Falling Down. Uh, and uh, there's a few others there. Oh yeah, so this is. This is the guy uh, Vittorio. He's from uh, who works on Warzone. Um, this is Sarah. Uh, Sar uh, Sarah. Uh, she's uh, just kind of part of the UI UX team. Uh, and I'm trying to see if I can. No, uh, oh, that's my. Um, there's actually a few other. There are a few other folks that I that I don't work with specifically, but uh, um, they're just again. It's just I was really happy just to be there, just to kind of hang out with some of my friends who I haven't really, either some of them I hadn't met in person yet, because Sydney I hadn't met in person at all uh, until until the, uh, this past Friday, and uh, it was just really cool just to kind of, and then have these also mementos too, so I'm going to keep these for for life, because this was, this was a really cool moment. Um, and uh, I was disappointed that they didn't have any swag. I was kind of hoping for some Call of Duty swag, because I never, I, you know, I, I like, I want to be able to get a whole bunch of swag based on the games I worked on, so... I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't get any. They didn't have anything available there. I don't know. I'm supposed to be getting a package, like a dev team package, but um, nothing came in the mail when I first got like when when I got back home. But so I'm gonna have to double check to to make sure. But anyway, um, it was a cool night. It was really neat. It was just great to be able to to just to hang out with friends and celebrate uh, a cool launch. And uh, yeah, and so far from what I've been told, I can't say much, but it looks like I'm gonna potentially be working with the Raven team for. Uh, for the next little while as well. So, kudos for, for that. And, or, not kudos. What am I talking? About? Yeah, I'm just no excited. I'm just excited. So anyway, um, let's jump into like now we've been kind of done the recap a little bit uh, for 14 minutes. Let's jump into uh, the news. And I and I wanted to kind of have this as an editorial moment because there's no specific news. Now, while this episode comes out, there is a very distinct possibility. A very distinct possibility that Nintendo may announce the Switch successor today, or at least announce a Direct or something for the, for the Switch successor. And I'm sitting here thinking, what is, what is going to be in the Switch 2? You know, we've talked about sort of the, the, the Switch 2 at least a little bit over the course of this year of the show. But supposedly, from what we've heard from rumors, 
is that this month, October, was supposed to be the month that they were go Nintendo was going to announce the Switch successor. They've been very careful about every time that they have done uh, a direct over the past two months. That they've been very clear about this is not this is a direct that's not going to talk about the Switch successor. So they have acknowledged that there is one coming, and October has been like they that's when they were announced the first Switch. But it's getting to be, it's the 29th of October. They've got three days left in order to be able to, like, uh, supposedly, if they're going to hit October, in order to be able to talk about the Switch 2. And I'm willing to bet, because I'm recording this, just as a heads up, I'm recording this at, like, tw a quarter to seven in the morning um, on Pacific Standard Time. But um, it's technically close to 10 a.m. Eastern Coast Time whenever I do record these. So there is a very distinct possibility that in 15 minutes, usually around 10 a.m. is when they kind of announce. Actually, I'm going to even pull up. I'm going to pull up Twitter right now, because why the heck not? Because um, usually they will announce something, uh, like pretty early in the morning or whichever. And I am just very super curious as to when is this going to happen, um, and also uh, when is like or what is going to be in the Switch Two. I mean, like we've talked about a lot about like kind of the, the sort of the rumors about, um, um, let's see. Okay, so they haven't, so they released something about Animal Crossing Pocket Camp Complete releases December 2nd, 2024. Okay, that was as of, that was as of 45 minutes ago. So it's a very distinct possibility. They may not announce actually anything uh, today, but. When is this coming out? That's what I want to know. When is what is happening? Where? When is this? When is Nintendo Switch coming out? When, I want it, like what's it going to be called? What's it going to have? The suppose the rumors are that it's going to have the magnetic like magnetic Joy Cons, which I'm okay with. Actually, it might be easier to be able to for motor disabled players to be able to snap on the the Joy Cons a lot easier than having to be able to try slide down and click. Um, so that'll be huge for like just just built in for that. We talked about it like sort of the access, potential accessibility in it, but I'm personally more like so we've talked about that. If you want to go back into the archives of, of the show, find the one where I talked about the accessibility in the Switch too. Um, but the, where I want to see just overall is I want to see a bigger screen, potentially maybe like oh, well at least one with maybe not so many bezels. I think the OLED, the Nintendo Switch OLED, which I have, I think that's kind of a good size screen. I hope that it's, it's OLED. I'm probably willing to guess it's probably going to be LCD, but it potentially might be an IPS screen, which makes it could potentially be a little bit brighter, but also would be a little bit cheaper because OLED can be expensive depending on sort of the technology that you're using for it. So um, they I, I, like I don't like I think they here's the thing I I know I'm, I know I'm scatterbrained on this, but here here's the things that I think that Nintendo is going to do. They're going to do two things. They're going to make sure that the price is as uh, inexpensive as, po as possible because they realize that um, that kids are going to want this and they want to have it as, as widely available to as many people as possible. And I don't think that they would sort of lock it down to like a, uh, a premium price. I think they're going to try to be able to make it as affordable as possible and probably in line with what the original Switch uh, launch was, which I think was... Two ninety nine or three ninety nine. I can't remember. It's been it's been a minute, but that would be my guess. Is they're going to try to be able to go for the same price, uh, if not cheaper, for the uh, for when the Switch came out for Switch Two. And then also, I think that they want they see that. I don't think that they're going to pull a Wii U situation. Um, we've we kind of are thinking that this is going to be another Switch. Like and generally with Nintendo, they don't make. They, they, whenever they make second consoles of anything, it's always different than the previous one. It's never, they've never been really great for backwards compatibility. Because if you think about it, you went from Nintendo to Super Nintendo, and then from uh, Super Nintendo to N64, and then N64 to the GameCube, and then GameCube to the Wii U, uh, and then the Wii U to, uh, or sorry, the Wii, then the Wii to the Wii U. That was the only sequel console they'd made, and then they went to the Switch. Now, granted, the Wii U did not launch well. So I think that they are, Nintendo is going to be smart about this, and that they are going to um, that they are going to be able to keep the the Switch to to look look and feel pretty much almost exactly like the original Switch. I think because of 
there's so many install base of so, uh, so many people of the install base that have a switch to or have a switch I think are going that they're going to want to keep those like everything as backwards compatible as possible um, while I don't think that uh, I don't think that they would make it so that the joy cons would be compatible but I think that they would at least be compatible wirelessly maybe not necessarily like where it connect because I think if they're going to if the rumors are true that's going to be magnetic Unless they do have the 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 lock in thing for to be able to slide, I don't think that they'll be able to do that pretty easily. Um, but I think wirelessly those controllers will still work. Same with the Pro Controller as well. I think that their games are going to be as backwards compatible. I think it's going to be a little bit high, uh, higher processor, with bigger maybe bigger of a hard drive, and also they want to make sure that the battery life is super is super close to. What the original Switch has, if not better, because because they they want to keep like Nintendo is very good lately of trying to be able to keep as many people in their install base as possible, and I think that they want to make sure that the battery life is good, that the that um, the the it's affordable, which is why I don't think they're going to do OLED or any like I don't think they're going to do any like those are the rumors that it was going to be able to run like Unreal Engine five and and all that stuff, and it potentially might. But I'd be willing to bet that probably they're going to go with sort of the, a more cheaper version. Like a, they're not wanting to be able to like try to break past the, uh, the sort of graphics barrier um, when it comes to other consoles. But I think that they probably see that they they pr probably could go for a little bit cheaper chips and processors, so that they can be able to keep the battery life at a at the same, if not better, than the Switch, uh, the original Switch was. So I think that we're probably going to see, yeah. A, a much kind of lighter body, maybe to, to like a body, like a sort of something that feels relatively close to the to the weight of the of the original Switch. Um, it's going to be a little bit more sleeker, I think. That with also with the Joy Cons, I think that again, magnetic is going to be a little bit easier. I think the screen's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Not again, not OLED, but that's why. Like, and and I think that everyone's sort of speculating that there's going to be such a it's going to be such a graphics powerhouse that's going to be able to play so many different games and you know now it's going to be able to like everyone was complaining about how the switch just can't handle um like modern games anymore cuz like with pokemon coming out and it being such a bad like badly run game i think it was just the the game was just badly run because shortly after that they released nintendo released tears of the kingdom and that showed that no nintendo still's got still got it if you just optimize your game properly so so that's uh, so I think that that I think we're gonna it's gonna be a, definitely a graphics and performance upgrade, but I don't think it's gonna be at the high end as what people were speculating. So those are gonna be th those are my predictions as far as what the switch would be like. Um, what I would want is I, again I just want to know like how much is it? When can I buy it? Um, and and are there going to like what kind of games are they going to be releasing with this? Is it is there going to be a difference between Nintendo Switch Two games versus Nintendo Switch games? Are they going to be backwards compatible so that every game that you purchased will be playable on uh, the Switch Two? I'd be willing to bet that probably the uh, digital versions of games will probably run. It just depends on if they're going to keep the same type of cartridge for uh, for the Switch uh, Switch Two. At least that's kind of my thinking. Uh, I'm I'm trying to be able to go, like to refresh uh, uh, Nintendo's own thing just to make sure that I'm not going to miss this by like 10 a.m. Um, on the East Coast. And so far, I am not seeing anything. But then again, it is close to seven. So, um, anywho, I I'm just more curious about when is when are we getting the switch? Like when are we getting this announcement? When when is this switch coming out? Where is the Switch 2? Where is it? I want it. And I'm not even just kind of like one of those, like, I need it now. I just want to know, hey, what's going on? We've got like three days before the end of October, and the rumors were supposed to be that it was supposed to come out, or at least announced, this month. They got Nintendo got three days left. I never really had a prediction as far as when they were going to release it. It was just one of those... Or when they were going to announce it, I just always thought like, well, well they'll announce it when they're going to announce it. But everyone kept speculating October. I was like, all right, okay, October. Well, three days left in October, still nothing. <laughs> but 
Nintendo does what Nintendo does, and uh, like the Nintendo get a Nintendo, and they could very easily just buy the like make this entire episode completely moot, and just be like, Steve, you're an idiot. You should have just waited 15 more minutes or whatever, um, which is probably going to be the case. It's, it's it happens whenever I make this show. Uh, anywho, um, so that's going to be that's my sort of rant editorial, uh, as it were. Um, I was going to go into other stories, but I think it's I think I'm going to kind of keep it at that. Um, Sorry, you know what, actually, because there hasn't really been a huge amount of, like, breaking news, especially for this morning. Um, I'm just going to pull up VGC, because I, I do have stories, but it's just, like, it's kind of, they're they're kind of, yeah, they're dated for more of last week. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking at right yeah, right now, there's nothing really kind of breaking news. So, uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Today's going to be, yeah, today's going to be a recap of... Of Black Ops Six launch party and also what's going on, Nintendo? <laughs> what do you What do you got? When are we gonna get? Let me know. What are your thoughts on the Switch Two? What do you? I, I personally, here's my thing that I hope to happen. I don't think it will. I want the name of the Switch Two to be the Super Nintendo Switch. How cool would that be? How cool would that name be? The, going back to its roots, the Super Nintendo Switch. Come on, the name's right there. Anyway, that's everything. What do you think? What like? What do you think the Switch is two is going to be called? What do you think is going to be in it? Let me know in the comments down below. Very curious to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, and also, what do you think? What, what, what would you want to be able to see accessibility wise uh, for the Switch two, as it were? Um, anywho, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope to, I hope that I essentially that I don't have to re-record this in a few minutes. Um, if there's going to be any new announcement within the next, like you know, by, usually around 10 a.m. Eastern is usually when they announce something. So uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, take care. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Um, so again, make sure to to, to to subscribe. I really do appreciate it if you can, uh, so you know we get these videos when they come out. And, um, yeah, that's it going to be it for me. Um, yeah, have a good one, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.